Duke, you suck. You shut your mouth! Welcome to the Duke You Suck Podcast. And now, Duke Durango! Hey everybody, welcome to the Duke You Suck Podcast. This is a very, very special episode. I'm here with PWA promoter Kurt Sorokin, one of my good friends. Kurt, welcome to the show. We've got a big event we're talking about today. What's going on? Uh, thanks for having me back. I uh, most requested guest uh, via Dusty Adonis. Yeah, Dusty Adonis is by and large. I'll say this about Dusty Adonis: he is, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to knock anybody else, but he might be my most ardent supporter. Oh, dude, I, I'm telling you, and I and I get and I get the uh, the weekly updates on the numbers of viewers. <laughs> like it, it's constant. He's he's always comparing uh, his appearance to mine, but then he was on twice. And, He's like, you know, my dream is to have you on a second time. And then I told him I was recording something yesterday, but that was for the Hitman. And uh, he's like, oh, I make my dream come true. I sure hope it's uh, it's with Duke, you suck. And I'm like, I, I, I wish, man. Like, I'm waiting for the call. This I will wish. Be, this, will be, this, will be a really, this will be a really good surprise for him. So. Yeah, I wish I could be on the Duke Durango podcast, said no one ever. Yeah, man. So uh, this Saturday, March 5th, 2 p.m. Hitman game, and then uh, 5 p.m. PWA Wrestling putting on a huge event. We're back for Battle in the Dome 2. Two years later, we were hoping to do this. Um, what was going to be the, the next year? We did the first one in 2019. It was a huge success. Um, you know, just only one other company has wrestled the Saddle Dome. Um, you know, they didn't even do Stu's. Uh, 85th birthday or was it 80th birthday? It wasn't that yeah, was the 80th birthday? Was it? It wasn't in the saddle dome though. Was no, it? that was in the crowl. It was, it was in the crowl. Yeah, so I, I mean, remember, yeah. we're the only other company, uh, and as far as I know, we're the only company to ever do forum wrestling on like an, on ice, like not with the ice out mm-hmm. on ice on the ice. Well, that's because we try that's to just, look to see. That's because just how PWA does it. And, you know, we don't do safety. anything. We don't do anything easy. <laughs> yeah. What's more Canadian than pro wrestling in Calgary on ice? On the ice. Yeah. So, so that the event was, uh, was a huge success. I mean, I, I think they had about uh, between four and 5,000 people that turned out for that game and, uh, you know, just over 3,000 stayed for the wrestling. So, I mean, that was, that was huge. So um, Rob Kerr and, uh, and everyone at the Hitman, they were eager to, uh, to have us back and again. Then COVID hit, and that basically kind of sh- has shut us down the last few years. And uh, we started talking about this because, uh, you know, back in uh, probably in the summer, uh, planning to do it sometime during this uh, this season. But again, right. um, you know, they, COVID kept rearing its ugly head and kept postponing things. We had to look at different schedules. And again, you know, we're doing it as part, as, uh, part of as a tribute again to Bret Hart. Um, and working with the hence, uh, hence the t-shirt I'm wearing. Yeah, it's almost yeah. as nice as mine. Almost. What are you talking about? It's the man, the myth, the legend, right on the front. <laughs> so that is a nice shirt. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? We yeah we uh, we uh, also have to include the uh, um, Calgary uh, Prostate Cancer Center. Yeah, you bet. Um, well, so that's that, the thing is this 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 event is a huge cross promotion, right? So between. Um, the prostate cancer center, which is a charity, you know, near and dear to Brett's heart, obviously um, yeah. the special Jersey that that's going to be sold um, player worn jerseys that are going to be auctioned off and sold um, proceeds to the prostate cancer center. And then PWA, I don't, I think, you know, other than the first time you guys did this, this is an event. This isn't the type of thing that's happening anywhere else right now. No, n- nothing like this. And I mean, what a way for us to kind of come back, um, you know, out of, uh, out of hiatus, uh, you know, out of hiding, um, and, and yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we, we even envisioned something a little bit bigger, um, but we said, you know, listen, let, let's find a date that works for everyone. And, you know, we had to, had to work for Brett and Brett, of course was on board. He'll do anything to help him in. And, and like you said, the uh, prostate uh, cancer center is near and dear to his heart and, uh, no pun intended. So, uh, yeah, we were able to, to, to get it happen. And, you know, uh, a lot of that is due to Rob Kerr and all the, uh, all the hard work he's done in his team um amy and everyone else at the hitman and 
uh, it, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be special. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, like you said, you get the hockey game come on, coming on first. Um, and, and it's very cool because last year, I, I believe it was, or the last time it was, uh, I think they played, uh, I think it was the Saskatoon Blades. Yeah. Um, this time around, it's going to be the Oil Kings. So, um, you got, you got the so they're going to, the Hitmen are going to put the beat down on the Oil Kings and we'll then see. PWA wrestling. <laughs> Man. Okay, listen. Well, they're, they're struggling listen. this year. That's okay, I know, you know, That's, this is supposed yeah. to be all friendly or promoting, you know, the <laughs> Prostate Cancer Center and Bret Hart night. And I'm, well, but you can't sit there wearing a Hitman jersey talking shit about the Oil Kings beating No, hey, hey I, I, I'm just saying anything I will can fight happen. Um, the, Looks like they've been struggling a little bit. Match. But you know what? Uh, the Oil Kings bring out the best in them. Um, I got nothing but love for, uh, for the Hitman. I mean, they've been very good to us, and I'm very supportive of them. Um, I, I've actually been to more um, Hitman uh, games than I've been to an Oil Kings game. Oh, <laughs> I, I hear I said it. I said it. Yeah, you heard that here first, it. Oil Kings. I, they haven't sent me a jersey yet. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah. Um, no, I, you know, it's going to be a great game. You've got the best in junior hockey, two clubs that are going to bring out the best in each other. And, you know, they have a great uh, fan base. There's a lot of support for, for WHL and junior hockey. So that's going to be amazing. And then for us to follow it up afterwards – um and and do the uh, do the event battle on the dome two that we're gonna do it's people are really gonna get their money's worth for fifteen dollars uh, if you go through our portal um, that I'll be sharing with everyone you get the game and you get the the wrestling show and five dollars off that ticket goes to the Calgary um, Prostate Cancer Center oh that's fine. So, I mean it's a win win situation for yeah. everybody it's win 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 yeah win win win. No, this is something that um, uh, I guess I might as well say it here now, if it's okay with you. Um, this is the only event that could actually get me to come out of retirement. Um, I've had a never few say people, never. Well, and that's, you know, this is it. You're hearing it here kind of first, folks. Some of you already had guessed, but, um, you know, Gert will attest there was no intention for me to get involved in wrestling this event. Um, I just offered to help out at the press conference if they needed some bodies to show up. And, you know, a few texts later, I'm going to be wrestling on this card. So um, after three years and three months, about 10 days. Uh, the hours and minutes? No, I don't have the hours and minutes. I don't, come on, I don't want to be exact. Um, yeah, man, I'm coming out of retirement for one, for one match. This isn't a comeback. This is a, you know, this is, this is a one-time show. I'm, first of all, I'm really thankful that you've allowed me to uh, participate in this because, Again, what I did a lot of great things in my career, but one of the things I never ever got to do was work in the Saddle Dome. So yeah. I am extremely excited. And you couple that with again the Hitman game and you know Bret Hart night with the Prostate Cancer Center. If that can't get you off the couch, nothing's going to. No, and I mean everyone's itching to get out and do something. You know, um, hopefully we're seeing uh, finally returning the tide against COVID. Um, your restrictions are starting to relax, you know, hopefully in a, in a very positive, safe manner that everyone's going to feel safe and, and, and that it will be safe. Um, it, uh, you know, it's evolved a little bit because we didn't know if we were going to be able to do any personal appearances. If we we're going to be able to sell any merch. Um, right. so, you know, that was part of the, the specialness of the, the first battle in Dome is, um, you know, we had one, of, we had Brett's old ring, um, set up on the concourse and we, we, Brett did pictures. I, I believe he did pictures in the ring. And then later our guys were all there taking pictures, signing autographs, you know, getting up clo uh, close and personal. And that, that's a big thing, especially, you know, uh, fans of all ages of wrestling, obviously, you know, but especially with the kids, it's a big thing to get in the ring, get a picture. Um, they're loving it. So, you know, we won't have a ring on the concourse, unfortunately, but you know, uh, it looks like uh, as long as everyone uh, um, wants to participate, uh, looks like there there'll be a meet and greet, and that'll add just uh, more to the event. That's already going to be fantastic. And yeah, I mean, uh, to, it, it, I mean, it didn't take much to coach you out, but you just got to know. <laughs> you got to know well, to say the right things. Timing's and, everything. And I'm not going to say that you retired more times than Ric Flair, but I uh, didn't. I didn't. You, you, you've definitely come out of your retirement a whole hell of a lot less than he has. Um, and what I'm wondering is it took you almost what 18 months to unpack your gear after you retired. I think it was close. And now, to and now you got to pack that all up. 
I had to go Put find it, it man. Yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to find it. Did yeah. you check but, to make sure everything fits good? Uh, yeah. You look like gonna, you're in still good shape, brother. So. Nothing, nothing's going to fit good. But um, you know what, man? I, the truth is I don't care. I don't care. This is going to sound funny, right? I don't care if I go in there and get the shit kicked out of me for 15 minutes. I don't want that to happen. Obviously, I want to win. It's an elimination tag that I'm involved in. So, you know, I, I love to compete, so I want to win. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, just that rush of being out there with the with the guys and gals one last time and that time being in the saddle dome it was just you know like I say it didn't take much coaxing and when you when this is one of those things where the stars aligned and yeah a lot of guys that ha- have had the career i've had this is this would be a once in a lifetime chance anyways but yeah. at this stage of my life you know kind of where i'm at now this is it like you know i'm going to be uh, a lot of people know, and a lot of people don't know. I'm going to be 50 this year, so I mean, these chances are going to be few and far between at this stage of the game. You're going to be the second oldest person to ever wrestle in Battle of the Dome. Who's the first? Did you, <laughs> you old bastard? <laughs> I, I may, I may have worked in a battle royal. There, there nice. might have been nightmare eight and three quarters might have wrestled on that show, and I, we're not sure who that was. But I, I, I heard he was fifty-one years old. That's that is dynamite. Well, and I hear, um, <laughs> you know, let's get back to uh, Battle at the Dome two here. And March. it wasn't good, but it happened. Hey, sometimes sometimes it doesn't have to be good to be good. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. Um, Battle of the Dome two, March fifth. Rob Kerr, tell me about his history with the Masked Avenger because it sounds like he's got a history with Michael Allen and Richard Clark. And uh, is are we talking Masked Avenger against Michael Allen and Richard Clark for the PWA title? Is that what's happening here? So basically, so what basically now I got to correct you because Rob would be the guy to correct you. you know, he's worked. I don't know if you know much about Rob, but Rob uh, from Edmonton. I don't know a family. ton, but what I will tell you, he was an absolute one hundred percent fantastic pleasure guy. to deal with. Yeah, fantastic guy. His, uh, he grew up in Edmonton. His family owned Scona Billiards, which is one of the most uh, well-known uh, billiards place in, in Edmonton and a uh, bit of a landmark. And he, he got into broadcasting where he used to, uh, he used to broadcast the Flames games for, uh, um, I believe, for Sportsnet. Um, so he's been around for a long time. And then he went into his role here. Uh, I'm not sure how long he's been with the, with the Hitman now. But he's a driving force there. Um, um, with, with the, with the organization and with the rep roughnecks as well. Um, so, yeah. So uh, Rob happened to come to an event and it was leading up to battle in the dome, the first one. And, okay. um, and um, um, he got, he got beat down pretty good by, uh, <laughs> by Michael and Richard Clark. And uh, did Michael Allen, Richard and- Clark do push ups on him. Uh, no, no, I don't <sighs> believe he. Well, you know what? No, he might've actually, he, better he actually might've. You better. Um, and I, 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 you know, again, because I'm a little senile, but I, you know, Rob, Rob might have been masquerading as the Hitman Avenger. So that's where I've told it's the Hitman. Sorry, Avenger. not the Master Avenger, the Hitman. The Avenger. Hitman I do Avenger. apologize. I do apologize. Names are important. Um, and and um, I, I know the Hitman Avenger, whether it was Rob Kerr or not, was in the Battle Royal, at, at Battle in the Dome. No one has confirmed for sure if uh, he is the Hitman Avenger or not. Now, has there been a denial, though? Has there been denial? Uh, Yeah, there's been denial. Okay. Okay. He's mild-mannered Rob Kerr, but, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, when you see, uh, when you see, uh, you see Clark Kent, then you see Superman, then you see Clark Kent. You know, it's. uh, When you're on my screen, I only see Superman, buddy. (laughs) Well, I didn't mean me. I just mean you the visual <laughs> of uh, how how most people you know you think would see through that, but Lois Lane never right. saw through it until they hooked up. I heard doesn't leave um, a good impression. Doesn't leave a good impression. I got to be no. honest. So uh, so yeah, they got into a bit of a Twitter war, and I think there's some bad feelings from the last battle in the dome and from the couple of Peter Boy shows leading up to that in Calgary, and. Um, yeah, Michael and Richard Clark, he challenged the Hitman Avenger. Basically, he challenged Rob. Um, you know, he's he's uh, calling him out as the Hitman Avenger. And he's so sure of it. He said he'll put the title on the line. And um, that, 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 that uh, leads to some liabilities because they, you know, they, didn't talk, <laughs> they didn't talk to me or the championship committee. So 
we had to intervene and there's liability issues, obviously someone coming into the ring and if they're not well-trained or, or whatever, but um, we've, uh, we're going to work through that. I'm going to be meeting with both parties at the events uh, prior to, to us performing. And I'm going to have I'll, to speak I'll, volu- to- I'll volunteer to train the Hitman Avenger. You know, that, uh, that Michael Allen, Richard Clark. Okay. I don't know. He's good. He's, he's a champ. Cool. He's great, he's- but he's got an attitude problem. You know, he thinks, he does. He's, better. He, he thinks he does. he's better than everybody else. You know. Yeah, it, it reminds me of a very young, uh, a young fit Duke Durango. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Let's... Yeah, I was never young and fit. I was just young, but he's a fit. You know, he's a fit kid. I, I don't think you had that level of arrogance. You might have been very assured of yourself, but there's that's he takes arrogance to another level. And you know, you can't deny the guy. He, he has been champion for three years. Well, oh, well, okay, but three years, years. When he has, over, over a thousand he has, days. Over a thousand last time days. he defended the title, though. Well, you know, we 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 did state a couple months into the uh, into the pandemic that that we uh, we were on hiatus, that all titles were and title reigns were on hold. But technically, he has been champion for over a thousand days. So I won't allow that count to continue. Doesn't count during a pandemic. Actually, if I were on the championship committee, if I were the commissioner. All titles would be taken back in tournaments for all the belts. You'd just start from scratch after a two-year hiatus. You come on now. You're not the champion. Well, well, now um, that's been discussed. What we're going to do when we come back. And, uh, and speaking of you being on the championship committee, there's always a spot. Um, when you did retire, you knew you were hired to be the the uh, PWA Calgary Commissioner. And I think you made um, zero zero appearances. <laughs> I know the number. Yeah. And we know why we talked about it, how hard it yeah. would be to come and, and be around. And it's an instant adjustment. When you well, have- it took, what did it take? Like four or five text messages and I'm back in a match. Now, you know why I can't come around. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you know, it, uh, I was thinking about going right to the boss and, and making sure you got the go ahead. And then, you know, maybe if you get told you had to do it, it'd be different, but I didn't, I didn't have to go that route. She was, to be honest with you, this is what's so amazing about my wife is she knows that I'm fragile, right? Like she hears my knees going upstairs, like someone's chewing celery standing behind me, you know? (laughs) And uh, she's like, I think you should do it. And I'm like, I think you're crazy, but okay. (laughs) Um, In fairness to me, you know, it didn't take a lot of arm twisting, but I did sleep on it. I did, you know, I did. Yeah, you did. You did say that you let me think on it. Then it was let me sleep on it. Yeah. In the morning, you were still kind of, you had to have breakfast first. And then before lunch, you were in. So <laughs> let me eat on it. Yeah. Like I was so, so glad that you got fed well. So that, can't I, make, I you can't make big decision. decisions on an empty stomach. No, you can't. That's, that's terrible. Yeah. No, and, and honestly, man. So there's a, ten, it's a 10 man elimination tag, right? For the inaugural Hitman Cup. So you want to be hoisting that cup up. The winning team is, is they're getting a trophy. We're going all out this well, year. No one, no one told me that. Now I, now I feel like I'm better getting shape. I got four days to get in shape here. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> and, winning um, the cup. I, you know what? I even said at that press conference. I don't even know what belts up, but I'm winning a championship of some kind. So I'm glad you told me this because now it's going to be true. Well, there's a couple belts on the line. Yeah, but I can't win. Those nope. Well, I can't nobody win that said ladies' you... title. It wasn't Dusty not because Adonis? I'm not a lady because they'll beat my ass. Well, that you know what, there's four very, very talented. Women. Yeah, I don't I would want to get in the ring with them. Well, I met Gigi yeah. for the first time at the press conference. I'd never met her before. I'd only, you know, kind of heard about her and reputation. And yeah, she put the beat down on somebody. She, you know what, she came to one of our uh, mini camps that uh, uh, that was set up between myself and good old Tex Gaines and uh, and Mike Richard Blaze, and um, you know they did a few of them, and she came. And she, like, she caught on right away. No athletic. Um, you know, she played uh, sports, obviously, in high school and that. And I, I'm not sure about her uh, about, uh, her college education, university. But I think she might have been an athlete at the university level as well. Um, and, you know, she, she came in and wrestled. You debuted for us, wrestled for, uh, you know, for quite a, quite a while before the pandemic hit. And then uh, she actually got the opportunity to uh, transfer work into the States to Houston and go and train with Booker T. There you go. And it's just paid dividends. Like she's just, she's fantastic. So she's coming in here with all the confidence in the world um, to defend that belt. And uh, she may take that belt right back with her. 
but she's facing three very, I'd say, you know, three of the top girls in all of Western Canada. And um, she's going to have her hands full. Got, and the thing is, she doesn't, she doesn't have to be pinned though, to lose either, right? So we've got, um, obviously, we've got Gigi. We've got Zoe Sager, who's been on a yep. meteoric rise. That girl's career has taken right off in the last few years. Um, Taryn from, from accounting. And who's the fourth yep. participant? And the fourth is Ava Lawless. Oh, okay. So she was supposed to, so she was a fan coming to PW shows for years. You've met her before. Um, and she always came with a, with a group and we, her and I had talked many times and she always said, oh, she, she kind of really liked to do it. And it was kind of, you know, one of her dreams. And, um, you know, I, I urged her, I said, you, you should do it. I, I think that you would have a knock. I just, she has the look. She's, you know, she's, she has uh, a great look. She, she's, uh, got a unique look um um you know she's a beautiful person inside and out and she works hard dedicated and that passion has just come out and uh she's just gaining more and more confidence and she's supposed to debut um in that pandemic yet so she never got to debut so this is her debut for pwa what a way to debut for the company. I was company. just going to say, how many people get to debut in a saddle dome in a, in a match for the, in a four-way match for a women's title belt? Jeez. For a company that you, that you watched for years and loved, it was a huge, like her and her, I, I can't say enough about her, her group of friends. They're all fantastic people. Um, they've always been very supportive of us uh, at all the events in Calgary. They even came up for Edmonton events. And again, they're that unique um diehard uh, passionate fans that you and I've talked about that, that they're the ones that keep wrestling in Calgary going. Right. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, along with, uh, with Thomas and, uh, Oh yeah. The and, Thomas and, and the David's and the Moe's of the world. Those, you know, uh, those, those beauties, the Julians. Well, and people yep. don't realize, I mean, you know, you draw 150, 200, 400 people and there's a core group of probably 50 to 75 fans. Do you yeah. see, at every show or at least every second show. Yeah. Like it's just, and you've been seeing them for 20 years now, 25 years. Like yeah. it's crazy. Well, they were a bit, you know, and especially, you know, especially uh, Thomas and David, I mean, they, and, and their buddies, I mean, they've been coming, they were coming to all the stampede shows. Yeah. And those guys don't just go to one show. They go to every no. show. And then they will follow you to the airport. <laughs> well, I mean, they work at the airport. So, I mean, because didn't they didn't didn't you run into him coming back from vacation one time? I I think I was yeah I was leaving the airport. I was like I was going somewhere and I was walking through the airport with some friends and yeah I hear hey Durango in the airport. So you my, don't somebody turn was asking me about it. <laughs> well, somebody was asking me about it. Like, do you still get recognized ever? And my wife's like, he got recognized in the airport the last time we traveled. Yeah, yeah. Like that they're, they're, count, they're, they're a couple of beauties. They stay in contact with me all the time. It's not about wrestling. You know, they'll ask about my mom, ask what I'm doing. Right. Ask how all my family's doing. You know, they're, uh, they're very kind hearted guys. And, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, it's been a nice little break because they like to talk to my, you think I talk a lot. They like to talk. At the oh, shows. they have questions. They have questions to spare those boys. So the first thing they come and ask you, Kurt, mm -hmm. you, I got a couple of questions for you. Of course you do, Thomas. You always have questions. <laughs> I love that guy. And then and then I'll just, I'm like, okay, one. And then he'll like, okay. And then he'll tell me the second question. I'm like, okay, you got one more. And then I, we got to get the show started again. And then he'll go to ask me. And then he'll go to try to push and ask the fourth one. I mean, we, we got, Thomas, you're holding up the whole show. We got to get, oh, okay, 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 hold. Oh. Hold up the Can whole you show. you tell Durango to come out and say hi? No, he doesn't <laughs> like you. He's not coming out. <laughs> Yeah, man, and that's – but the thing is, what's cool about those guys, too, is they hear an event like this is going on, and instantly I get a message from those guys. Hey, are you going to be at the Hitman game on March 5th? Yeah. Like, instantly. So it doesn't matter that it's – it doesn't matter what it is. If it's wrestling, they're going. Like, they're supporting it. I suggest to stay away because if there are good – I don't know. I, I think the concessions are going to be open. I don't know about alcohol, but if there's going to be beer sold and those guys find out that they can buy you beers, you're best to stay away from them. Oh yeah, I know. I'm I'm sober, Durango. I don't drink. Oh, that's, that's good. That's not true. Because <laughs> they like their beer too. No. Yeah. No. I mean, I would sit down. I'll sit down and have a beer with the boys. That's just not the place. Oh, no, absolutely. You know what I mean? But yeah. I mean, the thing is, what's what I love about an event like this 
is it does bring people together, right? Like you yeah. and I, yeah, we've done a podcast, but we've talked more in the last five days than we've talked in the last three years. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, that's yeah. been really cool. Plus I get to come to the locker room and see everybody, but also get to see a hitman game. And most importantly, and I know that sounds weird um, to support prostate cancer. Like that's one of yeah. those things, you know, I, I really, I'm going to tell a story on this show. I don't know if I've ever told it before. And if I've told you tough crap, you got to listen to it, but I'm going to tell you about the first time I ever had a prostate exam. I'm not going to name my doctor. Should be good. <laughs> I'm not going to name my doctor, but he's a really funny guy. We have a great rapport. So I go in, I was, I think I was 41. I go in to have my, is, hold on, hold on. You said doctor was he an MD or is he a dentist? Uh, he's a veterinarian. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so I go in and I sit in the chair and we're kind of talking and he says, looks me in the eye and he goes, so you ready for your first full physical? And I kind of, you know, I know where he's going and I say, well, I don't know. It depends how far you want to go doc. And he goes, well, just second base. I was like, God, oh, geez, you know? So then, you know, the time comes, goes through the physical. Now it's time for the, for the prostate exam. And I'd never had one before and I'd never asked anybody about it. So I had no idea what I was in for. I don't know if I thought he'd like candles, but it went much faster than I thought it would, you know? Yeah. And so what I was, there's no foreplay. Yeah, no, no. And what I was really kind of surprised by was the amount of lube. Like I'm still mopping up lube from that experience. Like it was crazy. So, and then I, you know, he finishes, it was a very fast experience. And that's one thing I want to tell you guys, Um, they can do it by blood. Now you don't have to go through this kind of embarrassing part anymore. Um, so if your doctor's checking your prostate with both hands on your shoulders, probably find a different doctor. Um, but you know, so I look at the doctor cause I'm really embarrassed and you know, you shouldn't be, but we all are to some degree. So I look at the doc and just to break the tension, I look at and I go, so what do you figure doc about one in 10 guys don't seem to mind that. And he kind of starts laughing. He just looks at me, he just shook his head. He's like, what is wrong with you? And so, yeah, that's my first prostate exam. Inquiring reminds you want to know, did you shave beforehand? No. No, all right. No, and now that you've mentioned it, I apologize, doctor, because I never even thought about it. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's fun- wait a second. <laughs> now, <laughs> okay, I'm going to assume by the question you did, or did someone suggest you should have <laughs> after as well? No, I'll give you my own experience. Okay, so obviously, like, hey, not everyone knows, but I mean, I had cancer um back in 2000 it was testicular cancer so you know the uh you know, the neighbor I was around the front and right. um you know that's pretty harrowing so when 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 i had that and they discovered that they 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 checked for that so um i was very lucky so my uh my first time was with my uh very petite asian doctor uh, <laughs> yeah, who find has, a doctor with small hands if you have that that was her like that pinky that was her big finger yeah i just like She's okay. We're good. I'm like, I didn't know if I, uh, <laughs> I should be offended that I didn't feel anything or that. And then I looked like, no, no, no. She got tiny hands. She just got very tiny fingers. <laughs> so, um, oh, man. She, um, <laughs> and, she, and she was fantastic. She's the one that or between her and my other doctor, they, they're the ones that discovered my cancer. I'm forever grateful, uh, grateful, grateful to them. They've been my, two of them have been my doctors for 30 and 35 years. But um, yeah, she just said, you know, uh, it should be done. And then I remember going to see her again and she wasn't available. And I, so you can see Dr. Joel, Joel Hansen. So this big Swedish doctor. And I remember going in and seeing him and we're going to check some stuff out. And he says, and then when you're also here to uh, check your prostate, well, this was his pinky finger, these three <laughs> fingers together. And I'm like, no, no, we're good. No, no, no. I know we're, 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 we're good. No, I don't even have a prostate. <laughs> no, no, it's, but we're good. <laughs> I'm actually a lady. I don't have a prostate. Yeah. I was, uh, I was terrified. Oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. uh, and, and then I went to see her again and she goes, Oh no, no, I, I don't do that anymore. And I'm like, Oh, and then, and then she's the one who started talking to me that a lot of doctors, you know, you get to think is a lot of people think that it's uncomfortable for patients. How do you think the doctor feels? They're okay. doing how many of those a day at the ones, you know, well, and going back to your, for them. Well, going back to your testicular cancer, there was a time I had a long story short, I had a torn hip flexor and everything in my groin region was kind of swollen. And it was actually sore down in my testicles. So I thought I had a problem going on down there. So I go to the doctor and my doctor, for whatever reason, has the coldest hands in the league. So I drop trial. He puts on his rubber gloves. He goes to check for a lump. I immediately react because his hands are so cold. And so I say, and so I kind of 
move and he goes are you okay and i go i'm just a little uncomfortable and he literally says how do you think i feel yeah <laughs> i mean it's uh you know it's it's weird um yet maybe wonderful but uh <laughs> so a, a good friend of mine who used to work in a lab decided one day i'm gonna become a doctor he went to med school became a doctor after we became a doctor all of us like okay grant you're our guy what do you mean prostate mm-hmm. exam no no, no, he said, no, yeah, way. we'd be, we'd be at get togethers, playing poker, doing all that, <laughs> playing hockey and guys would be just dropping, you know, in the locker room, changing like Grant, while I've got, while I'm changing, you know, no, no, he wouldn't do it. And then he was the one that said, listen, hardly anyone does this anymore. It's all done by blood test. I hate yeah. to tell you, get your jollies somewhere else. And, uh, <laughs> get your jollies and, uh, somewhere. Yeah. Else. He goes, you know, he's. He, and he and he, and he explained it. He goes, you know, it's, you know, you know, think for the doctors, it's it's uncomfortable for them as well, but it's a necessity. Yeah. And I mean, you know, they're they're obviously they're professionals, and it, it's, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of things that they have to do that, um, you know, that I'm sure feel uncomfortable to both. And and there's some just amazing healthcare workers out there. But yeah, and then and then uh, in, in talking to Rob, and when I got hooked up with the uh, with the Calgary Prostate Cancer Center. Um, you know, I learned about the, the bus that they have come on, come out. Right. They'll do the, they'll do the testing yeah, on site. The man, the man bus, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It, it, what a fantastic thing. And the testing just got more sophisticated. There's a newer test that, um, that is even more accurate. Right. So, you well, know, see, again, I tell I mean, everyone, yeah. you and I are sitting here, we're having a laugh and joking about our experiences, but at the same time, it's one of those things we were there for a reason. And the, yeah. I mean, we can laugh about it now, but when you're there, getting checked there's always that like you can feel like a million bucks you can feel healthy as anything but there's always that feeling like when you're getting checked what are they going to find and i think that's what actually prevents a lot of men or women too, a lot of people simply from getting things checked is they are scared to know the answer they are scared to know if there's something wrong and it's kind of like well what like nobody wants to find out they're sick but if you're going to be sick you want to find out early well and that's exactly the point and so i've had that conversation with many people like many people like well, how did you find out that you had it? Like, well, I felt the lump. Well, how did you know? Like, how do you check? I'm like, do you not wash your junk? Yeah. Well, yeah. Soap it up. You know, you'll yeah. feel it when you're cleaning yourself down. You'll know. And, and I could feel something right. At, you know, it hurt. I'm like, well, that doesn't seem right. Well, and I cut mine like and it. I cut mine very early and went to the doctor like right away. And yeah. that's what saved my life. Yeah. Well, and guys like, you know, check your testicles for lumps. You're not playing with yourself. You're checking your testicles. Like, come on, boys. This is, you know, again, we're laughing and joking, but this is serious shit. Like it, it yeah. literally, one of the things I didn't realize, um, somebody that we both know very well, Smith Hart, I mean, Brett and Smith Hart, they're brothers. Um, Brett got his prostate cancer found, his cancer was found early, detected early and he survived. And unfortunately yeah. Smith, who was never anything but good to me, um, didn't get his checked and it was found late and he unfortunately passed away from prostate cancer. And I honestly did not re- I knew Smith died of cancer but I didn't realize it was prostate cancer until yeah. Brett said it at the press conference. And it's, it's one of those things like, guys, we got to look after it. Like, you know, talk to your friends, talk to your brother, talk to your dad, just get it checked. It's the simplest thing. It's, it's a check mark on your doctor's blood work form. And it's um, so many, yeah. You you know, if you're getting your, your annual physical anyway, um, you're getting blood work. I like this one I went to do this year, um, the requisition form. I've never seen so many check boxes in my life. Well, now that you hit this age, you know, we should be looking for this, this, this. And I had, I had to look like, what is all these check marks? So I'm like, it's like a multiple choice, this? final exam, oh, just everything filled yeah, in. Yeah, just, um, C, 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 A, B, 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 B. <laughs> it's, um, which again, I'm grateful everything came back and everything was really good. And, uh, but again, yeah, the stigma, like you said, people, you know, they know there's something's wrong. They feel something's wrong, but they don't want to go because they don't want to find out. And my, my parents lost, oh, at least a dozen of their male friends died from prostate cancer because they all went too late. Right. You, you know, again, guys um, and women for, you know, when it comes to breast cancer or any other type of yeah. ovarian cancer, I think you, something doesn't feel right. And even if something like you said, everything feels right, get your annual checks. It, there, and especially as you get to a certain age, um, you got to take, you got to take your health as serious as possible. You got to take care of yourself. And, you know, don't, uh, don't let any of those stigmas, don't let, uh, don't let anyone, any, anything keep you from, from going and doing what's, what's best for your health. Uh, sorry, man. I just, 
we go for a yearly physical, my wife and I, and um, I don't know if she wanted me to tell this story, but a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago now, they found a mole at her physical. And if our doctor didn't find that mole, our doctor is a fanatic about checking your moles. Um, like you'd be, you'd go in and he'd be like, doc, I got a broken leg. He'd be like, cool. We'll set that in a minute. Let me check your moles. It's just the way he is. And he found a mole on her back and she went to see a, you know, it was a big, they had to cut a big piece out. And um, the dermatologist she's seen after told her that she, if they didn't find it, she would have been dead in two years. So it's not like you have time to fight this stuff. Yeah. Right? And like, I mean, you wouldn't notice something on your back. No. Like, how, like no. how do you see that? Yeah. So yeah. it's very important to, you know, uh, to get that yearly physical. And and it, 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 I, I missed out for almost two years because um, a lot of doctors, they weren't doing physicals. Yeah, when COVID happened. They, I mean, they had to cut some stuff out, and uh, and you know, I w- I was, you know, I was, uh, you know, I don't worry about my health so much, but you know, I don't, I don't smoke. I really do. I drink anymore. Uh, you know, I try to stay really healthy, and um, you got to encompass all that, and um, not being able to go. I mean, that can cause you know anxiety. And I just thought, hey, you know anything, anything could happen. And then again, and then you just go, you know, just another thing out there that could possibly harm you. So I was so grateful to get in there. And I, you know, I think I probably talked to him because I hadn't seen him in about two years. Right. My writer, Dr. Kelly is fantastic. Um, I think we probably talked for 15, 20 minutes catching up. And then he's like, well, let's get the show on the row. And then we, you know, we spent on there about 35 minutes doing the physical. Listen, you talk for 15, 20 minutes, buying a pack of gum at seven <laughs> 11. <laughs> this is this is true, and I you know, know why, that because you know you know I, I, know I, talk so I do the same thing, man. You know you know why I talk so much though, because it's fun. I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. lonely. I'm gonna start saying go. that to people. That's my go-to. Yeah, I'm, I'm lonely. lonely. That's good. I I'm lonely. That. <laughs> All right. What other matches do we have on this card? Let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's. Well, we look. we talked we talked about uh, we talked about the girls' match, which can be fantastic. Um, one of the uh, one of the perhaps most intriguing matches is going to be for the Mayhem title. Um, yes. So that hasn't been defended. Someone else has also been a champion, but isn't bragging about it for over a thousand days. And that's yeah. uh, that's Reed Matthews, the thickness. The thickness. Yeah, that kid is thicker than a snicker. He is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he. Uh, he decided what the match is going to be when he found out his, his opponent would be Sheik Shabazz, another former Mayhem champion. Uh, I mean, I, actually, a guy who I think is, I think he's had every belt maybe except for the PWA Commonwealth belt. I don't know if he's had that one, but um, yeah, they're going to do a tables match. Uh, that's a brave. Those are brave guys. I mean, and that's that to me is the, is the thing is. You know, there's going to be a cross section of fans there that have never seen a tables match before. So yeah. I think that's something that's a really cool, you know, like there's probably going to be some people that are going to be like, they're going to put each other through tables, but then there's also going to be some people like, they're going to put each other through a table. Oh, people are going to be loving that. So, yeah, I think and, so. Um, and, you know, and, and two of PWE's best like that, that is going to be a hard hitting affair. Um, we touched on Michael Allen Richard Clark versus the Hitman Avenger. And, uh, the champ is very confident, maybe overconfident. And you got a wild card coming in, you know, uh, stranger things have happened in this, in this business that we work in. And, uh, anybody, yeah, I don't want, anybody I don't want to any rub anybody's night. nose in it, but do you remember the time big bag Boris beat Andy Anderson? Yes. I remember. I was never, there. never say never. I was there. So was I, I was and, standing, and- I was watching the whole thing. It was amazing. And you know the, the the fantastic thing is Big Bad Boris reminds him at every opportunity. <laughs> and and he was bugging him so much here just in the last month. And he had to take a short vacation to Mexico just to get out of the country. Get yeah, away just to Boris. get away from Boris's harassment. Just to get away from Boris. It's and, hey, and Boris, and I, even and a I broken believe, clock's right twice a day, bud. Come on. And I believe there is a there is a I, I believe Boris pulled a uh I think he pulled a uh Apollo Cree line, like, ain't going to be no rematch. He won't give him a rematch, eh? Yeah, ain't going to be no rematch. So it's, uh, well, hey, you go out on top. You know, it's George Costanza, well, and you want to go out on top, and so does Big Bad Boris. So you, I'm just going to let Boris know that you compared him to Costanza, and we'll move on from there. Um, 
you know what match I'm really intrigued by? I need to talk about this for a second. Is uh, Michael Michael Richard Blaze, who's I mean everybody's favorite. The kid's a stud. Versus a young fellow that has moved up the roster so fast in the last three years, Kid Chocolate. Man, this uh, this is scheduled to be the main event, and this this well again this match of the year anywhere in, in Canada and it, it could live up to. So that's okay. Match so of the year in any promotion. So right there's now, a chance I could be done early enough, get, see the medic and then get into the stands to watch that match. Oh, absolutely. Okay. that. We will have the cardiologist standing by. Don't worry. We'll yeah. Just see. have that oxygen tank under the ring. EMTs will be there. You'll be, you'll be good to go. Yeah. Like, Perfect. You know, who knows you, you? I mean, you might be really tired. So have that oxygen you might go all the way you might win that cup all by Listen, yourself Who knows? i don't want to set the bar too high but i could blow up on my way out to the ring Oof. <laughs> i gotta at least get you in the ring maybe there's a wheelchair at the saddle well you know what we'll have a walker there i'll secure a walker for you actually what we could do is get one of those young guys like maybe maybe is chris Steele gonna be there maybe he could piggyback me out there you know, I, I, I'd love for him to be there, but that guy's too busy climbing mountains. He's climbing mountains and acting. A lot of people don't know that uh, Chris Steele's got a burgeoning acting. Oh, he, as oh he's extra. been acting for years. Acting yeah, a act, fool. Yeah, acting like a wrestler. I heard rumors <laughs> that he was acting. Yeah, we, uh, we had a, we had a good doing some. I went for drinks with him. So. We went and had dinner a couple of weeks ago, and uh, did, he's doing did he really. Pay? Did he pay with that big acting money? Are you kidding me? There's oh, nothing's out. changed. You can you can actually hear his wallet open like a brand new textbook. Oh yeah, flies and moths come flying out of there and stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's like a little skeleton of a raccoon in the bottom. Yeah, he's uh he's thrifty. But no, he uh, he's doing really good. He uh but he looks yeah, he was just getting ready to film some or he was auditioning for actually a fairly big commercial. So he's doing really good. He's been Don't tell on... him I said this cuz he doesn't need a bigger ego. He's a pretty good looking guy. And I mean, he's in the best shape. I, I, the guy he's I don't not know how he does unfortunate it. looking he gets i don't know how he does it but he finds a way to get even in better shape well here's what he has that we don't have discipline yeah <laughs> yeah it comes down to one word discipline not 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 early in his career he didn't no well no he was always disciplined to get in the gym oh always oh are you kidding me always 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 yeah um, his but his diet like the way that he he yeah. said he took it to another level. It, it came down to diet. Like he always, I mean, I don't know how much sleep he always got because he's always been an early riser. So it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. how late he worked or, you know, he used to work at the arenas back in the oh, day. He's a machine. Matter, he's even a working trips. machine. He, I mean, he is, I'm an old, you know, big old farm boy, right? He's used to getting up early, working hard. I love talking shit about Chris Steele, but there aren't, there's very few people in the world I respect more than Chris Steele. Well, like one of our best friends in the business, right? You know, yeah. It, or yeah. in or out. Like I, I love that guy. Like yeah. Family. Like he's. Yeah. And I like teasing him because it's he takes it well. Thank goodness. Or he. Yeah, he him. does. He does. Yeah. And, oh, but you yeah. know what I like to? I do like to remind him. And a lot of people don't know this about Chris Steele. Is one time he yelled at Kurt's mom. He did. Yeah. He yelled at my mom over yeah. the most ridiculous thing yeah. because he didn't hear and didn't understand something properly. But and bottom uh, line, he was a big broke star. her heart. He, broker she still brings it up and she's still a little devastated by it so she her, has the odd nightmare i'm actually still kind of surprised like i like i didn't get my feelings hurt but it was like eye-opening to see your tag partner treat an elderly lady in that fashion it was terrible it, it was, was terrible it was, it was quite disgraceful i literally thought she might slap him <laughs> now that sick. she's got that repaired uh rotator cuff that shoulder uh -oh. she's got a brand new bionic shoulder i think steel should probably watch out yeah, he's gonna get probably should up. probably should uh, send her some flowers, wish her well. At the very least, an apology. That's the least that he could do. The yeah, least. at the very least, a, a nicely written public. And apology. it's so out of character because he's such a good guy. Yeah, other than when he's shoving at old ladies, disgusting. Yeah. disgusting. At least he wasn't shoving them down. Hey, listen, that was one time when I was. Drunk. Well, yeah. All right, let's get back on track here. So, and then of course, you know the, the, that match. You've got Mojabari, who's kind of fallen under the tutelage of, of the excellence of execution, Bret Hart. He's taken a big shine to Mo over the last couple of years. And, well, I know uh, he was just down at Tyson Kidd's dungeon here last week, I think. Yep. Yeah, he was uh, He was in the States uh, um, 
um, doing some, doing some visiting and, uh, you know, got to get in the ring and roll around there and, uh, which, you know, which, which was fun, I'm sure for him. And, um, well, if you can get um, to spend any time with TJ, man. Well, I mean, I mean, what, what, what better vacation is to go visit someone and they just happen to have a ring in the garage. Like it's just, it's well, just not only that, that the per, the people in that garage are Tyson Kidd and Natalia Neidhart. Like, yeah, you want to sit, you want to learn. There's, you know, there, I can't think of a wrestling school on the planet that's got a better tutelage than that. And that's no disrespect to anybody out there running no. the school, but you know, for my money and, and Becky Lynch mentioned this, I don't know if you've seen this when she was on with stone cold, um, First and foremost, TJ is probably one of the most underrated minds in the wrestling business. Oh, absolutely. In my opinion, probably one of the most underrated people in a business period for being ace, yeah. what, like, what a good guy he is, and be what he knows and understands about wrestling. And in my opinion, a close second to him on that understands kind of the business, even though we might do things differently, is um, Michael Richard Blaze. That yeah, kid, absolutely. that kid's mind for wrestling is absolutely amazing. well. They both their minds, especially Michael's, go uh, yeah. uh, you know, a hundred kilometers an hour. Like if, if yeah. it just never stops. Like he's he's yeah. dreaming for every stuff. spot he I have. Up. That kid has like yeah. Pain. He he would wake up. I'm positive that he keeps a notebook next to his bed, and he wakes up probably dream stuff. And right away, it's on there. And back to bed he goes. And yeah. uh, I've worked with him, you know, in a, in our. In our in our uh our day jobs and that and, and and just talking to him like he just it's non-stop like his mind never stops thinking yeah and uh, tj was a very obviously was a was a really good uh um mentor to him obviously and uh, rubbed off on him really well but you talk to tj about that and tj won't really take any credit and well, he, you know what he'll say TJ... that he bounced stuff off Michael all the time. Well, and actually TJ said that to me one time. I was saying like this kid athletically and creatively is at a place I never was. And um, TJ started laughing. He said that kid's been ghostwriting my matches for years. Yeah. You know, and it's just, and there's no bigger compliment I can give that guy. You know what I mean? Like he, he's yeah. so gifted. It's a period. Like I can't, to be honest with you, I mean, I can't, I can't understand why he's not getting signed. Like it's actually a, a little bit of a point of frustration for me. <laughs> well, and I think for him now too is, you know, and it, it, I think it's changed for a lot of independent wrestlers. Like WWE doesn't have to be the goal anymore. No. And, and, and maybe he would thrive in, in some of the other promotions. Like I, Michael blaze is probably is uh, got the perfect mold for AEW. And right. not that he still couldn't go be successful in uh, WWE, but, I think, um, I, I, think I think he'd, he'd be, be great in Japan, Japan too, though. Oh, I think he'd be great in Japan. He'd be great in Impact. He'd be great wherever he goes, wherever yeah. someone would give him. Just, just all you got to do is just open that door, crack that kid will kick that door open, and um, and you'd never want him to leave. And that's that's why he's been with us this whole time. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, like, a he can you know he can work, but b he's such an easy kid to do business with. Like he's yeah. so, you know, it's so, I mean, the, the thing that I want to impress upon anybody that is maybe thinking about going to this, to this show, uh, Saturday, March 5th at 2 PM for the Hitman versus the Edmonton oil Kings followed by PWA wrestling. Um, is that these are guys that are going to be next level stars. Um, yeah. when we look at the history of PWA and how many, um, WWE stars came through or started out in PWA and became champions in the WWE or new Japan or impact or wherever. Um, and now probably in AEW soon. Um, this is your opportunity to be, to see somebody on TV and say, Hey, I saw that guy before he was famous. Yeah. This is literally that chance. Yeah. We're still, and again, I, I, I don't want to take credit or PWA take credit because we've just set a very good stage and had a very fostering environment for everyone to thrive. So, you know, we never take that credit. Um, but I mean, it is pretty mind boggling how many people spent their formative years here um, and, and, and went to WWE and like you said, captured championships. And again, I'd never take credit for TJ and Natty, uh, what they accomplished here because they were two of the pillars that, um, that established and, and uh, legitimized PWA. But it, what they'll say about the company and, and, and what it helped, you know, um, helped them earlier in their careers. Um, and there's just that mutual understanding and respect. And uh, um, they did so much for us. And, you know, we, we, 
I was happy just being a small little cog in, in their yeah. journey to where they, you know, where they, what they've achieved um, yeah. in their careers and, and, you know, still not done. Um, so I, yeah, it, it's, I just got to stop you and interrupt you for a second. I'm absolutely, this is way off topic. Um, I'm so loving what Natty's doing right now. <laughs> I am oh. so loving like the stuff with her personal assistant and the world records. I mean, this is just, this to me is the my this is the favorite stuff in her whole careers that she's done. I am loving what she's doing right now. I know what the crazy thing is is she not just like the nicest, sweetest person. Like success hasn't changed her at all. I've known her since she was I think I met her when she's 15, turning 16. And she's she's the same genuine person. And I mean, so is TJ, you know, so uh, you know, so was APOC. Rick Victor, well, so this is what I say uh, about all Jigger those Mall. guys. Like, you know, they all they've all had success and they've matured. Yes, but, they, but otherwise they haven't changed a bit. Yeah, Harry like, Smith, another one. Like they they all they all just um, just very you know just great people. Um, they're they're grounded. That's the easiest way to yeah, say it. Is they they are they are like and it's success never went to their head. Um, they also nothing was given to them. Every yeah. single one of them worked hard and yeah. um, and well, a lot of people will look hard. at. You know, a lot of people look at, you know, Natty's a heart and Harry's a heart and TJ's, you know, was an honorary heart at one point. Your name can only open a door. It can't yeah. keep you there. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of second and third generation wrestlers that are no longer in that company. No. Or no longer wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like too. a lot of them didn't make a long career out of it. And, and yeah, I mean, for her to kind of still be, uh, you know, and she's not, you know, it, it's weird because she's not old. You know, but she's been around for so long that people kind of don't, they don't really start. She started so young. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, to see her as a veteran in that. And she's, she keeps almost, she keeps making herself relevant. And I mean that in a positive way because she's never been irrelevant. Um, she, um, there's, I don't think, I don't think anyone has ever had a negative thing to say about her definitely no female rest. even if there's someone that didn't belong there i don't think anyone could say anything bad about it no, natty's one of those people that if you have a problem with natty it's probably your problem yeah you're probably yeah. something not right with you yeah but yeah. you're, you're yeah, projecting something 100%. on she's one of the nicest most genuine sweetest people you'll ever meet like if you can't get along with her you probably just don't get along with people anytime we've had the opportunity to to hang out you know whether it's after a show in edmonton calgary um, even when we went to Houston for, you know, WrestleMania 25, um, they, you know, they were so good to us, you know, and, and um, Diana, Diana Hart as well. I mean, just, every, you know, family's been always been so good to me, but um, Natty is just so sneaky. I don't, every time we go have a meal, I, I never get a chance to pay. I go to right. pay. Oh, it's already been paid. And I'm like, Natty, like, like, I, oh, I'm buying next time. Oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. And the next time she's sneaky again, like it's, yeah, the generosity you know, of spirit is, is uh, on she, that. She, they yeah. got the biggest heart, and you know, TJ has always got the time to talk. You know, it's you know, I you know, I try not to bug any bug any of them, um, you know, all that much because you know they're busy, they got busy careers. But anytime um, there's an opportunity to talk to them or just you know shoot them a message, whatever, you always get a response. Yeah. Um, it could be something subtle, you know, you always hear from him on birthday, DJ during, uh, I, I don't think he went to Saudi Arabia, but, um, I believe that was on my birthday and, uh, yeah, I got a message from TJ, yeah. um, which is really nice. And, uh, and a couple of quick exchanges by text and, you know, Natty, same thing. Um, um it, you know, anytime it's you know, Christmas, anything like that, you know, we'll exchange pleasantries and, and, and just, just even like the exchanges back, like it's just. You know, it's just, uh, they're just fantastic people. And it, yeah. and it's great to see because you know what, those are the people you want to see be successful. Well, you know, people say, oh, you deserve it. And, and they are people that truly like to your point earlier, have earned every bit of it and are really and really and truly good people that the success hasn't gone to their heads. Um, you know, they use their platforms to help other, to help lift yeah. other people up as well. You know, it's not like Natty, somebody in a locker room trying to keep people down or TJ's not, yeah. you know, sharing his wisdom with anybody that wants to ask him a question about the business. Um, they're just great people. And, and I mean, and to tie this all in Michael Richard blaze, you know, I know TJ trained him. So 
he's literally, I mean, he's his own person. I don't want to come across the wrong way, but he's just like TJ in that. If you're willing, if you want to learn, and if you're willing to take the time, that kid will give his time to anybody that wants yeah. to ask him a question. You know, and that's it, one of it. That's something one of the, special. That's one of the things that he enjoys the most uh, when it comes to wrestling is is um, is teaching yeah. um, and training people and 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 anyone that even established workers or guys that have been working for years, anyone that wants to get better, like he, he'll make all the time. People are going to put in that effort. Yeah. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong. He'll put you through your paces. He'll make you earn it. He'll make you work hard, but that that's how he was trained. And, yeah. um, and again, and he's, he's got a big heart when it's, when it's offering his time and his advice, um, you know, and he's really good with the fans that way too. Yeah. Um, and he, and he doesn't, yes, he needs to get signed and he needs to go away and, and, and have success. That's what I, I wish for him as painful as it would be to, to see him leave and, and to lose him. And he's a, he's a, he's, a, I don't think anyone will argue he's the biggest star in PWA. Um, and I mean, that doesn't mean that not everyone else is a, not a star in there in, the, in the company, but I mean, he's just, he's been at us at level for so long. Yeah. Um, and that passion, but that passion now is rubbed off on so many, so many guys. His opponent, Mo Jabari, is a perfect example. Yeah. Mo well, has taken it to another level, his desire, his passion. Um, I'm sure Brett and Brett's encouragement um, and and guidance has rubbed off on him as well. well and and to, to blow more sunshine up, up Michael Richard Blaze's behind, I think the biggest compliment I can give, first of all, that I can give Mo Jabari is that you are in a position where somebody knows you can hang with yeah. Michael Richard Blaze. And that's a big compliment in and of itself. But then you're in a match where win, lose, or draw the fact that you can hang with Michael Richard blaze will elevate your status. And and I think those are, those are the most important matches. You know, those ones that literally, as long as you go out there and put on a decent match, no one's really going to remember who won or lost because those are two guys that are going to go out there. And I mean, to get this, like you say, for $15 fans don't realize this and they may, they may honestly think I'm speaking in hyperbole, but I'm not, you are going to get a main event pay-per-view level match for 20 bucks yeah right and they and, uh you know. Y- you know what's intriguing about this match as well that not only will they they're the compete level like the yeah. desire the passion the compete level oh these guys are hungry gonna, man they're gonna bring out the best in each other and they both know that if they go out there and they put on the best match they possibly can it's gonna help both of them People yeah. are going to see this, you know, there's going to be you know a what? lot it helps. of attention. Thing is, it helps everybody in the locker room, you know, yep. a rising tide floats all ships. So, yep. you know, people that are, you know, upset or jealous, they're not in the main event or whatever guys, this guy and gals, this is a huge show for everybody. Yep. Most importantly for the benefit of the prostate cancer center in Calgary, you know, yep. this is one of those where there are so many winners here. It, it's so great. Um, there's really no losers. No, and I mean to see the jersey. And if you haven't, if you haven't seen the jersey, make sure you go to, uh, you know, check out to go to the Hitman's website, CalgaryHitman.com, or HitmanHockey.com. I think it is. Sorry, guys. Um, but go look at this jersey. It's fantastic. It's a beautiful jersey. Players are going to wear the jerseys. They're going to be signed, auto, um, autographed, and auctioned off after the game. Proceeds go to the Prostate Cancer Center. There couldn't be a better show to tie in Bret Hart hockey and PWA wrestling. You know, and you know, another element to that main event is uh, Michael Richard Blaze said many times his favorite wrestler and one of his inspirations was Bret Hart. Um, Mo Jabari, obviously, a huge connection to Bret Hart right now. I, I, I wonder, I wonder uh, how Bret feels about this. Um, Bret, I know, is is uh, put over both of them. He he fully understands. Um, that TJ had trained Michael. He's well aware of who Michael is. He's obviously, you know, obviously got a close connection with Mo Jabari. You know, it, would he pick a favorite? Um, um, yeah, I, I, I'd like to pick Brett. I, I mean, I'll get a chance to at the event. I mean, before, I, I'm, I'm hoping we'll, we'll get a chance to chat. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see if he's, uh, if he uh, is going to be a little indifferent or if he just wants to see a great match or let's just put it out there, Bret Hart. I know you're watching my podcast right now. Oh, absolutely. Oh, hundred percent. Brett. Cause it, it's your... not, it's not table, ta- table hockey night. That's Wednesdays. 
Brett, I know you're watching the Duke You Suck podcast right now. I'm going to pose the question to you. Who's your favorite, Michael Richard Blaze or Moja Barari to win the main event at Battle at the Dome 2? All right. Let's wrap this up. Is your your phone ringing? No, sir. My ears are. No. So uh, we we didn't really talk too much about your match. I think we should go over that match a little bit because it's not just you in there alone. It might as well be. I'm winning. You well, I mean, you you just you you don't have to go through ten guys. Well, nine guys. You're you're gonna have four other. You're gonna have four teammates. Well, here's what and I'll you say. Have about a, you that have a match. very high caliber team. Well, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Well, here's the thing. What I wa- what I lack in the exuberance of youth, I make up for in the wisdom of experience. There you go. <laughs> But, who but else is in that 10 man tag? Let's talk about that. Who, who, so well, who you, 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 you'll be ta- you'll be tagging with Sean Moore. Oh, that's I, that kid's one of my favorites, actually. I love it. I mean, he oh. uh I'm a big know, Sean he, Moore he, mark. Prior to the pandemic, he left PWA to go and uh work with uh with uh Ring of Honor. Um, and um he was he was about to explode in the scene because again, there's another guy that's Top level talent PWA oh, yeah. um, that could main events very easily as well, um, and then Davy O'Doyle. Um, that's gonna be another one of your that partners. Kid, that kid's a powerhouse. Colton Kelly. Colton Kelly. Um, Last the, time I seen him, he was starting to look like Captain Caveman, so I'm a little concerned about him. Yeah. Well, as long as it, usually the hair, he's, yeah. he can he can get it out of his eyes. Yeah, and, if he can control uh, the hair. He moves, he moves a little bit better than the old man, but uh, <laughs> he might be a little bit more vicious than, uh, than Tex Gaines. So that's, that's a little concerning. Um, and who's rounding out your team now? Um, I probably should know this. Yeah, I'm disappointed. So I'm All right, who do we got on the other side? I'm getting a little senile here. Um, so on the other side, we have uh, Sir Kenneth Stryker, Ooh. who is – who. That guy, you want to talk about around. Chris Steele? I, I, he, Stryker's a loose cannon. You got to watch that kid. And Stryker may be, he may be the most fit man in PWA. I, and that's no, and that's no, that's no shot at Chris Steele. That, that just shows you how that, that, the dedication. I mean, he's probably the only guy that maybe is up there with Steele when it comes to how I'm hard I'm telling he Michael Allen, Richard Clark, you said that. I'm going to edit yeah, this well, out right now and send it to him. He's made me very angry. No, I mean, there's, <laughs> You'd have to put him. You'd have to put him up there too. But I, I, I can't. I can't. All three ego. of those guys are absolutely jacked. I, I can't feed that ego. No. Um, and then making his return as well will be the uh, the Omen Gabriel. Oh, okay. Uh huh. The vampire is um, coming back. You're also going to see the debut of Stephen Crow. I am very excited for this. I and correct me if I'm wrong. He is a young Michael Allen Richard, or sorry, Michael Richard Blaze younger brother. He is. I'm. I am excited to see that. Actually, he is. So there's. Uh, there's. There's. Uh, there's some talent in that family, as we know. Yeah. Um. So that's gonna be fantastic. And then we're gonna be having uh, a debuting wrestler, uh, Mars the Specialist. He's been wrestling for the last couple of years um, with uh, different uh, promotions in Alberta, and this kid is a rising star as well. Um. So there, yeah, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely some, uh, so some talent on, uh, in this match. That, and yeah. Like there's a lot of talent in that ring, like, and uh, remove myself. Like, I don't know who Mars is. I'll do some research when we're finished here, but there's a lot of talent in that ring. There's, uh, Bayrat Garani is going to be ah. one of your teammates. Actually, and I feel th- bad because he messaged me. <laughs> you should feel bad. I do um, and again, he's he was a rising star in PWA. Um, that kid, another, that kid's going to be a monster too. He's another a another player. graduate of uh, Storm Wrestling Academy. Um, okay, and he man, just, he's, he's how many studs has Lance turned out in the last few years? It's crazy. It's crazy. And I I, I know I I know I forgot the other guy because sometimes I forget who he is because he's kind of two people in one. He's always at conflict with himself, but but Jack Pride. Ah, whom I've never met. I've you know so seen his... you're get, that's a that's a really formidable team. That this 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 I'm excited for this match. And again, it's an elimination tag match. 
So one team could be fully intact at the end of it. It could get down to four of you, could get down to six of you, could get down to one guy walks out, perhaps Duke Durango walks out at near 50 years old, walks in, outlasts everyone, and hoists that trophy. As much as I love me, if I'm the last man standing in that match, they'll probably, well, I'll be the last man getting carried out of there. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'll leave it all around. there, but, you know, let's, nothing, let's... Go, nothing wrong with going on a stretcher. When you work that hard, there's nothing wrong with being carried out. <laughs> Whether it's on a stretcher or shoulders, as long as you go a winner, that's all that matters. Cool. I'm going out a winner. I can tell you that. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, this Saturday, March 5th, come to the special Brett the Hitman Heart prostate cancer center hitman hockey game featuring pwa wrestling on the ice after the game battle in the dome too baby we'll see you then thanks, all right Kurt. thanks a lot Duke, appreciate it you suck you shut your mouth